Force may be the most interesting. Air Force didn't recruit him that much in high school, probably because they couldn't find him. Tyrone was what you might call an Air Force brat. I was born in Massachusetts, then we moved to North Carolina for a couple years. Then we moved to England for about four years and back to Arizona for four years, and then I went to high school and finished up overseas in Italy. I think the main reason why I came to the Air Force Academy was basically to fly. I mean, when you're a little kid in the Air Force, you see airplanes all over the place, and it was one of those things that I really wanted to do, and I found out if I wanted to fly that this is one of the places to be, and so I came out here. For Air Force Football 86, I'm Lee Douglas. Coach, I've really been surprised myself of how well he can catch the football. Well, I tell you, and he just doesn't catch it in a game, John. He catches that ball in practice. He's a tremendous competitor, and he makes those catches look just routine. You know, that's a sign of a great receiver, when he can make the real difficult catches look routine. But what a competitor Tyrone is and what great pride he has. And, again, he's just such a great role model for the young guys on our football team and is just one of the strong leadership influences on our program this year. And I'm so thankful for him and the contribution that he makes to our team. All right, Coach, we're going to come back in just a moment and uh, take a look at the Western Athletic Conference race as the Air Force Falcons now are controlling their own destiny. They have the lead. We'll have that right after this. And, of course, you know, we're getting to the position in our schedule now where, you know, a lot of teams are playing each other. And you guys have played, you know, uh, the majority of your games except for BYU, and there is BYU knocking off UTEP. I guess that was a close game for a while. Big win for CSU over Wyoming. Well, that was a big win, and apparently, you know, uh, uh, CSU did what it took to win. Uh, Wyoming had a good offensive day. Done not a lot of points, but they certainly had a lot of impressive yardage and, uh, and number of catches in comparison to the number of times they threw the ball. But uh, CSU came up with a big play when they had to. All right, number of games out of the whack. Of course, New Mexico knocking off their arch rival, New Mexico State. Hawaii beating uh, Fullerton State. They're still a good football team. And Arizona State taking care of Utah. Let's take a look at the standings now for all the folks that uh, don't realize that you've played uh, two more games and you only have one left. Now, CSU still has to play San Diego State. Well, that's this week. And, uh, you know, we'll know something there because uh, possibly they'll eliminate uh, one another there. But, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> we've got a long time now to wait until uh, we get BYU here on December the 6th. But uh, in the meantime, we just hope some of those other guys will take care of each other. All right, Coach, of course, we've got the week off. That's why we're really not going to talk that much about Army. We'll talk about them next Monday, but I know you're glad to have the week off. Well, we really are, and I don't think it could come at a better time. Uh, our players need some time to rest. We've got some bruises. Uh, we're real concerned about Albert Booker's condition right now. Albert was hurt in the game last night and uh, just don't know his status, and it'll be a day-by-day -day thing uh, in our preparation for Army. But uh, I think our players need a little bit of break. I think the coaches need a little break, and goes, we need to get out there and do some recruiting, and that's what they're, they're doing this week. But, uh, you know, I, I think it has come at a real good time. And, uh, of course, now we've got, uh, really, when you get right down to it, uh, six weeks for three ball games. So it's going to really require a lot of discipline on the part of our young men, you know, to keep their attention on the, the matters at hand and, and the games that we've got ahead of us. Quickly, how's Jack Carlton doing? Oh, Jack's doing well, and we're so grateful for that. Jack was out at the airport before we left the other day, and uh, I know our young men appreciate that. I did, and uh, praise the Lord for him. And, uh, you know, Pee Wee and his guys are doing such a great job. Bud Saylor has jumped in there, and, uh, you know, we had Mr. Lick, and uh, I can't say those are the guys that really do all the work and just sometimes don't get the recognition for the credit that they so richly deserve in getting our young men ready to go out and play every week. All right, Coach, congratulations. That's going to do it for this week's show. We'll be back. TV 13, the leader in sports television, presents Air Force Football 1986 with head coach Fisher DeBerry. Sponsored by the First National Bank, McDonald's, USAA Insurance, and True Value Hardware. Now your host, John Eves. And good evening, everybody. Final score from Mikey Stadium Saturday afternoon, Army 21, Air Force 11. Coach, I know it is a disappointing loss for you. Oh, Johnny was a disappointing loss, and of course, you know, that was the number one goal in our football program, and of course, we still had a chance to keep the trophy here if uh, Navy can beat Army, you know, in their last ball game. But, uh, you know, it was a disappointing loss, but I really fell hard for our seniors because it, it bows out their career against Army at 2-2, two and, two, and I was really hoping we could win the football game for them and they could go out 
three and one against Army. But you got to give that Army team a lot of credit, buddy. They, uh, you know, have lost three weeks in a row now, and they came ready to play, and they gave us a pretty good lesson, and particularly in that first half, how to run the wishbone. Torrey Crawford, Crawford, their quarterback, had an excellent football game, didn't he? Boy, he really did, and I thought he was really the difference in the ball game. You know, he, 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 we just couldn't seem to grasp on to him. He's so slithery in there, but uh, you got to give the guy credit. He rushed for 165 yards against an outstanding defensive front, I thought. And, you know, we had some assignment breakdowns periodically, but at the same time, they did a good job of executing, too. And uh, when your quarterback is that productive and you can stay on a cycle like they did, I thought the real key in the ball game was their ability on third down to come up with a first down play and our inability on third down to come up with a key play. And of course, John, in the ball game, we were not as productive on first down as we need to be. And then on third down, we came up in long yardage and we were only two out of 11 third down situations in the ball game. And of course, I thought that spelt the difference in the ball game. Coach, it was a very, very physical game. How are you looking right now early in the week injury wise? Well, praise the Lord, we got a good report on Steve Sigler. We thought Steve might uh, possibly have a, have a broken shoulder, but uh, say uh, the x-rays proved negative and then Roy Garcia turned an ankle. We think Roy will be fine. And Mike Lohman hyperextended the knee a little bit and he should be all right. Tommy Rotello bruised his shoulder, but Tommy will be in good shape. Of course, you know, those things don't crop up whenever you win as much as they do whenever you lose. But, I, you know, our young men are competitive. They know that we've got a great season still in front of us and uh, two very, very important football games, and they'll work every, as hard as they can to be back ready to play. All right, Coach, we're going to come back, and we'll have all the highlights of Saturday's game right after this. Praise the Lord, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't cold, John, but, uh, you know, the, the rain certainly came in, but it didn't have anything to do with the outcome of the game. I thought certainly uh, dampened their, the, the number that they had. You know, they were expecting over 40,000. I think they ended up having almost 36,000 for the game. Well, a lot of tradition there at West Point, no doubt about it. Really is, and a beautiful, beautiful campus and a beautiful place to play football. Great enthusiasm. It's a great place to go and play. Uh, you know, you just can't let yourself get involved in all the crowd noise and everything, but their students do a great job and their fans and vocal support.